Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode in our series on the journey to the afterlife. We spoke previously about the journey of the soul after death, as well as the day of resurrection, and we began discussing the topic of the hellfire. We began talking about the issue of the hellfire and the people of the hellfire, and the inhabitants and the sins and the temporary punishments of the hellfire. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you and I from the hellfire. Today inshallah ta'ala we want to continue and in this episode we're almost wrapping up this topic of the hellfire. We want to talk about the description of the inhabitants. But before I mention some of the descriptions that we have from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I want to remind us about a very important concept and this is the issue of balancing in our faith and so again we mentioned that the heart on its path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be balanced between hope in Allah's mercy love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of the punishment so when you hear about the fear and you hear about the punishment and it's very explicit at times it's very explicit wallah when you hear about it don't let that be the only thing that you have in your heart towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, this is one part of your balance in faith. So when you hear about the punishment, let that turn you towards the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let that bring you closer to Allah. Let that be a reason for you to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah forgives all sins. As long as you're for, uh, repenting, as long as you're seeking the forgiveness of Allah, Allah forgives all sins. And so we remind ourselves about this as we are about to dive into very explicit descriptions of the people of the hellfire the actual inhabitants of the hellfire. And as we continue, we may, we may start to discuss the actual explicit descriptions of the punishments of the hellfire. So the Prophet wasallam, as was reported by Imam Muslim, told us that the distance between the shoulders of the kafir in the hellfire will be like three days traveling for a very fast rider. Imagine the distance of riding for three days, a very fast rider for three days is the distance between the shoulders of the kafir in the fire of hell. Why? Because these people, they're being expanded so that they will taste the punishment. This is part of their punishment in the fire of hell. Furthermore, Imam Muslim reports that the Prophet ﷺ said, the molar teeth of the kafir or the eye tooth of the kafir will be like Mount Uhud. Will be like Mount Uhud, the range of mountains. And the thickness of the skin will be like a journey of three days. And this is increasing the punishment severely. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that. Imam al nawi rahimahullah commented on this hadith. He said all of this is in order to intensify the suffering and all of this is possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must believe in it because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the truthful one, told us about it. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he said so that their punishment and their suffering may be increased and may be severe. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, that they may taste the penalty. So that they will taste the punishment. And this is what they get only because of their own actions and their own mockery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their own, their own arrogance and their own pride. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these traps of shaitan. Now, the people of the hellfire, will they be eating and drinking? Will they be eating and drinking? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِيَةٌ لَا يُسْمِنُ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ جُوعٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No food will there be for them, but a bitter ضَرِيَةٌ What is ضَرِيَةٌ? It's a type of obnoxious thorny plant, like a very disgusting plant, which will neither nourish them, nor will it satisfy their hunger. And so they're not eating because they think it's going to actually fill them up. It's actually causing more suffering. It's actually causing a greater amount of suffering. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishments of the hellfire. One of the things that people will see in the hellfire, the foods of the hellfire, will be a plant or a tree known as shajarat al-zaqum. And it's mentioned throughout the Qur'an. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَذَٰلِكَ خَيْرٌ نُزُلًا أَمْ شَجَرَةُ الزَّقُومِ Is that paradise, the better entertainment, the better abode, or the tree of zakum, a horrible, terrible tree in the hellfire, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَاهَا فِتْنَةً لِلظَّالِمِينَ Indeed, we have made it a torment for the wrongdoers. إِنَّهَا شَجَرَةٌ تَخْرُجُ فِي أَصْلِ الْجَحِيمِ Indeed, it is a tree issuing from the bottom of the hellfire. It starts at the bottom of the hellfire. طَلْعُهَا كَأَنَّهُ رُؤُوسُ الشَّيَاطِينَ It's emerging fruit or its branches as if it were the heads of the devils. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَآكِلُونَ مِنْهَا فَمَا لِئُونَ مِنْهَا الْبُطُونَ And indeed they will eat from it and they will fill their bellies with it. ثُمَّ إِنَّ لَهُمْ عَلَيْهَا لَشَوْبًا مِنْ حَمِيمٍ And then indeed they will have after it a mixture of scalding or boiling water. ثُمَّ إِنَّ مَرْجِعَهُمْ لَإِلَى الْجَحِيمِ And then indeed the return is only to the hellfire. Meaning they're eating from it in the hellfire and the return is back to the punishment of the fire of hell. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire. I want to remind us about the action item that we mentioned a few episodes ago. It was the action item of making dua seven times a day. Allahumma ajirni min al-nar. Allahumma ajirni min al-nar. Allahumma ajirni min al-nar. Seven times you make this dua after the Fajr prayer or after the Maghrib prayer or in another narration seven times during the entire day. The Prophet ﷺ said that you will have a guaranteed barrier or a shelter against the hellfire. So you make this dua every time you hear about the hellfire, every time you hear about the punishment. Oh Allah protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. Allah protect us and our loved ones from the torment of the hellfire. Now the fruits of the, the shajaratul zaqum that we just described, the fruits are described or likened to the heads of the devils. So that everyone may easily understand just how ugly they are, just how repulsive they are. Even though they have never seen the devils or the heads of the devils. And although the tree is so vile and it's so obnoxious, the people of the hellfire will become so hungry while they're being punished, they'll become so hungry that they will have no choice but to eat from it until they are full. And then when they have filled their bellies, the food will start to churn in their stomachs like burning oil. And this will cause another great deal of suffering. At that point, the people will rush to drink from Al-Hamim, which is an extremely hot water, a boiling, boiling water. And they will drink from it and drink from it and drink from it, but it will never uh, quench their thirst. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Zaqum throughout the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some of these other things. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said about zaqum. He said, if one drop from this tree of a zaqum, one drop came from this tree and it were to land on this world and everything that we know of in this world. He said, the people of earth and all of their means of sustenance, the people of this earth and everything they have as a means of sustenance would be destroyed. So how must it be for the one who is actually eating it? How is it for the one who has to consume it? And this is reported by Imam Tirmidhi. So this is something that's a severe, severe punishment. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our loved ones from that. Now the people of the hellfire will also be eating something else called al-ghaslin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَيْسَ لَهُ الْيَوْمَ هَا هُنَا حَمِيمٌ وَلَا طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ غَسْلِينَ So no friend does this person have on this day. They don't have any friends in the hellfire there to help them. Nor has he any food except ghaslin. Ghaslin is a corruption or a filth from the washing of the wounds of the people of the hellfire. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هَذَا فَلْيَذُقُوهُ حَمِيمٌ وَغَسَّاقٌ Indeed such they shall taste it, a boiling fluid and a fluid that is dark, murk, murky and intensely cold. غَسَّاقٌ وَآخَرُ مِنْ شَكْلِهِ أَزْوَاجٌ And other penalties of a similar kind to match them. And so al-ghaslin and al-ghassaq mean similar things according to many scholars, which is the pus or the result of the wound of uh, the people of the hellfire. The skin is oozing out with this pus because of the punishments that they're going through. Imam al-Qurtubi said, it is the juice of the people of the hellfire, meaning this is what they will be drinking from as well. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire. As for the drinks of the people of hell, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that they will drink hamim. A boiling, boiling water, extremely hot water. يَطُوفُونَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ حَمِيمٍ آل. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in its midst and in the midst of the boiling water, they will wander about. They will go back and forth. Now, something very interesting about this verse, and this is just to lighten the situation a little, is that this verse is mentioned in Surah Al-Rahman. يَطُوفُونَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ حَمِيمٍ آل. Now, this verse, when it's mentioned in Surah Al-Rahman, if you recite the entire surah, surah number 55, 
and you understand the meaning or you read a simple translation at least, you'll notice that Surah Al-Rahman does not mention any explicit punishment in the actual hellfire, any punishment of the hellfire except in this one verse. Except in this one verse. The rest of the surah when it speaks about the, the afterlife, it's speaking about paradise and the rewards of paradise in multiple verses. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is symbolizing that you speak a little about the hellfire and the punishments of the hellfire and He wants to tell us more about paradise. However, for the sake of this series, we're going through the description of the hellfire and then we will cover the entire description of paradise, inshaAllah ta'ala. And it is much more spiritually uplifting than anything else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Tusqa min ayn aniya, these people will be given to drink from a boiling hot water, a boiling hot spring. And the second thing, as we mentioned, as one of the fluids or drinks of the people of hell is al ghassaq And another thing that's mentioned is al-sadid. Al-sadid, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, min wara'ihi jahannam wa yusqa min ma'in sadid. This is what flows from the flesh and the skin of the people of the hellfire. And this person is seeing hellfire all around them and they're only able to eat or drink from this sadid, this puss. Kalmuhli yaghli fil butum. Another of the drinks of the people of hell is al-muhl. Kalmuhli yaghli fil butum. Imam Tirmidhi reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is like boiling oil. Al-muhl. It is like boiling oil. And when it's brought near a person's face, just near their face, the skin of the face falls off into it because of how hot this, this oil is, how hot this murky oil is. And so they drink from al-ghassaq, and they drink from al-sadid, and from al-muhl, and from al-hamim. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from ever coming near the hellfire. And so the people of the hellfire are being punished with their food and their drinks, and they're filling themselves up with these things, and yet these things are only making the punishment worse. It's a type of punishment in and of itself, so that they can taste the penalty of their actions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our loved ones from the hellfire and from the actions that lead to the hellfire. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to forgive us for our shortcomings. We're going to take a short break, inshallah ta'ala. When we come back, we will continue speaking about the description of the inhabitants. We will see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back from the break. Before we took a short break, we started talking about the description of the inhabitants of the hellfire. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, to protect you and I and our loved ones and the people that we know from the punishment or from the sins that lead to the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters, the hellfire is a reality. The hellfire is a reality. The hellfire is a penalty and a consequence. Do not bring yourselves near the actions that lead to the hellfire, near the people that pull you towards the hellfire, the people that cause you to incline towards them, attach with them so that they take you down with them to the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that. O oh Allah, protect us from the hellfire. So we spoke about the drinks and the food of the people of hell and the physical size of the people of hell is huge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentions the clothings of the people of hell. What will the clothings of the people of hell be? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا قُطِّعَتْ لَهُمْ ثِيَابٌ مِنْ نَارٌ So the people who disbelieved or rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be cut out for them garments, ثِيَابٌ مِنْ نَارٌ made out of fire. Garments made out of fire. يُصَبُّ مِنْ فَوْقِ رُؤُوسِهِمُ الْحَمِيمُ and poured on top of them will be al-hamim. What did we say al-hamim was? It is boiling, scalding water. And so this is what their clothes are made of. One of the people of the past, he recited this verse and then he said, SubhanAllah, glory be to Allah who has created garments out of fire. He had created garments out of fire. SubhanAllah who is able to do all of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even speaks further about the people who are fettered on that day and the things that they will be wearing on that day. وَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ يَوْمَئِذٍ مُقَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ You will see the sinners on that day bound in fetters, bound in chains. سَرَابِيلُهُمْ مِنْ قَطِرَانِ وَتَرْشَى وُجُوهَهُمُ النَّارِ Their garments are made out of liquid pitch and their faces are covered with the fire. So the garments, as we mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the hellfire to cut out garments made for these people who are being punished. And it is uh, adorned on these people as they are being punished. And so they're not even being punished naked. Some of these people are being punished with garments made out of pitch, garments made out of fire. 
And the fire, as we mentioned before, my dear brothers and sisters, is not like the fire of this world. It's not like a fire of this world, which we cannot handle as human beings. We cannot bear to go near this fire. So the people, they, they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say, إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرَّةً It is the worst place possible. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cuts out for them as part of their punishment these garments. And the fire, as we mentioned, is not red. The fire is not orange. The fire is not a beautiful sparkling fire. The fire, as we mentioned, was kindled for a thousand years until it became red. And then it was kindled for a thousand years until it became pure white. And then it was further heated for another thousand years until it became pitch black. And according to one of the opinions of the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, it is like tar. It is pitch black, dark black, like the darkness of the night when there is nothing that you can see. And so the hellfire, as they're being punished in it, they cannot even see around them. They're being punished. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that punishment. Now the intensity of the hellfire, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, the intensity is described as what? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَهُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَ لِيَفْتَدُوا بِهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا تُقُبِّلَ مِنْهُمْ Indeed, those who reject Allah, those who disbelieved in Allah, if they should have everything in the earth and all that is like it, with it, to ransom themselves from the hellfire on the day of resurrection, it would not be accepted from them. This ransom of theirs is rejected. And for them is a painful punishment. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Imam Muslim reports that the Prophet ﷺ said, one of the people of hellfire who found the most pleasure in this life, he enjoyed this life more than anyone else. So this person in this dunya, they enjoyed everything possible that you can imagine. This person will be brought forth on the day of resurrection and they will be dipped into the fire of hell. They will be dipped into the fire of hell and then he will be asked, O son of Adam, have you ever seen anything good? Have you ever enjoyed any pleasure? This is the person that enjoyed more pleasure in this dunya than anyone else from the people that are going to the hellfire. So he's dipped one time into the fire of hell and then he's taken out and he's asked, have you ever experienced anything good, any pleasure? And the man says, no by Allah. Oh Allah, I've never experienced any pleasure. Never. Everything in that one dip to the hellfire, everything that they enjoyed of this life, all that recklessness, all the carefree acts that are enslaved to their desires and rejecting the Creator and rejecting the transgressions, the boundaries of the Creator, these people, when they went to this extent for their entire lives and that one dip into the hellfire was added to the equation, they forgot everything good, every type of pleasure that they've ever experienced. And by Allah, this is from the punishments of the hellfire. Can you imagine, my brothers and sisters, if this is one dip into the hellfire, how would it be for a few moments? How would it be for a few hours? How would it be if it were eternal? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our families and our loved ones from entering the hellfire or going near the hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the person in the hellfire whose punishment is the lightest, the lightest punishment. He'll ask him, if you had whatever you wanted on earth, if you had anything that you wanted on earth, would you give it up to save yourself from this punishment? The man will say yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I wanted less than that from you when you were still in the loins of Adam alayhi salam, his forefather Adam alayhi salam. I ask you not to associate anything in worship with me. All Allah asked was not to associate partners with him. And then he says, but you insisted on, asso- on associating others in worship with me. And this is reported by Al-Bukhari. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked this person whose punishment is the lightest, would you, if you had anything in the dunya, would you use it to ransom yourself today? The man says, yes, meaning, of course, you give up the entire world so that you don't be punished in the hereafter. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I didn't ask you for that. That's not what Allah is asking of us. The Creator is not asking us to give up this whole world as a ransom. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all He asked for was not to associate partners with Him, not to worship others besides Him, to worship Him alone. And Allah has that right on us because He created us. Allah has that right on us because He created us. You don't question Allah, He questions you. And so shaitan will try to come to some people and the atheist will try this methodology of trying to cause you to question Allah, the actions of Allah. So they will try to make you ask, why did Allah do this? Why did Allah do that? You don't question Allah, He created you. And rather you follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded because Allah created you. And as we mentioned before, Allah has a right on you and you have a right on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's right upon you and upon mankind and the jinn is that 
we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he asked without associating partners with him. That's it. And your right upon Allah is that if you worship him and you don't associate partners with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from the punishment of the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah is not asking you and I to give up this dunya. Meaning he's not asking us to ransom this entire world for the hereafter. Rather you live this life, you can still be a Muslim, you can still enjoy this world and have a paradise in your heart and be a happy person in this world. Always cheerful and always mindful of the hereafter and you would win this life and you would win the hereafter. But when you're filled with stubbornness, when you're filled with pride and arrogance and the doubts from shaitan and the doubts from people who are corrupt in their ideologies and corrupt in their own logic and reasoning, this will lead you astray. And you must be careful because this is a dark and dangerous path that if you don't repent for it, if you don't repent from it, you could die at any moment in that state. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that state. There was a very interesting story from one of the Israeliyat, one of the stories of the people of the book. It may or may not be authentic, but the lesson behind it is absolutely authentic. And so a woman comes to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. She comes to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam and she says, O Prophet of Allah, is your Lord an oppressor or is he just? Is your Lord an oppressor? Does he oppress people? Or is he just? Is he fair? So Prophet Dawood alayhi salam was a little taken back. He said, woe unto you, what are you saying? What are, what are these words that you're saying, O oh lady? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all just. He never oppresses. Tell me, what is your story? Meaning, why did you say this? So the woman explains, O oh Prophet of Allah, I'm a single mother. I'm a widow. And I have three children, three daughters. Or rather, three children. And so she says, I sell things. I, yar I use yarn to make clothing, to make some types of uh, different clothing and apparel and things like that. And I go to the marketplace and I sell them. And the money that I make, I use it to buy food and sustenance for my family, for my three children. She says, one day I was going towards the marketplace. And on the way there, as I was heading towards the marketplace, I stopped for a while, I stopped for a little. And a bird came and took this little clothing that she had, that she was going to sell. This red clothing that she had everything inside. And the bird flew away. And so the woman is standing there and her sustenance is leaving. It's flying away literally. But this is her sustenance, the food for her children. She, re she literally has nothing else. It's as if you are working and that is, that's the only thing that you have to provide for your family and you have nothing extra. So you're living paycheck to paycheck and then suddenly the job just disappears. Like it disappears, it's gone. It just goes away. She's just standing there and she doesn't know what to think. She's extremely upset. So she questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why would Allah do that to me is what she's wondering. And this is something we should never fall into. It is a trap of shaitan. So immediately she storms off angrily to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. She goes to his palace and she knocks and she enters and she tells him the story. As she's telling him the story, as she's telling him how the bird flew away, they hear a knock on the palace door. And ten businessmen enter the courtyard of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. And he says, how can I help you? They say, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we are businessmen. We were traveling in the sea and there was a storm. And the storm was so severe that our boat had a leak in it. It started to leak. And we thought for sure we are all going to die. We are going to die for sure. So we started trying to empty out the water and we were making dua. We were praying, supplicating to Allah. And we were praying if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves us from this uh, from dying in the storm, each one of us will donate a hundred dinars in charity. And at that time, that is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. So each of us will donate a hundred dinars in charity. So as the storm is severe and they're trying to empty the water, they said suddenly a bird flew over us and dropped this red clothing and the bird just disappeared. The bird flew away. And as we were emptying out the water, one of the men, he looked into this clothing, he opened it up, the red blanket, and inside it was yarn. And there was thick material. So they said we used the thick material to plug the hole as we were emptying it out. As we were emptying the water out. And the water wasn't coming in as quickly anymore. So they emptied out the water. And as they waited and waited and waited, the storm eventually subsided. And they survived, every single one of them. And they said we have to fulfill our vow of donating 100 dinars each. So they went immediately after they reached land. They went immediately to Prophet Dawood salam, And each of them had a bag of 100 dinars. So they said, take this thousand dinars, the ten men all gave their hundred each, and they said, take this thousand and give it to whomever you wish, or whomever needs it. And they left. Prophet Dawood turns to the woman. 
He says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does business for you. He does your business for you. In the land, meaning when you sell things, and in the sea. You're not even doing the business in the sea. He is taking care of that for you. And you question whether he is an oppressor or he is just. SubhanAllah. He said, take this wealth and spend it on your children. He gave her the thousand dinars. My dear brothers and sisters, never question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions. Never question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom or purpose. Don't try to understand why Allah is doing certain things. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not to be questioned. Allah is our creator. And we humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to punish us like those before us who had arrogance in their hearts. Those who questioned the creator. And so my dear brothers and sisters, this woman, she questioned Allah because what she saw in front of her seemed like it might be a calamity. But it was a blessing in disguise. You need to be patient. You need to trust Allah. When something happens to you, trust that there's something good behind it. Now if you are committing many sins and you are not repenting at all and you're not being a good person, it could be a punishment for you. But if it brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you come back to Him, then this is something that is good for you. It is a trial, a test that you're getting through and you're being rewarded for it. So don't question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when something happens in your life. Rather put your trust in Allah. Say, oh Allah, I trust you and I know that there's something good behind this. I know that something is being planned that is better for me than what I'm seeing right now. Trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be patient with the decree of Allah and always assume good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He will come to you and He will answer your prayers in the way that you assume good of Him. So make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place strength and faith in your heart. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings and to forgive us for ever questioning anything at all in our decree. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. This concludes our episode for today. Join us next time as we complete the last episode on the topic of the hellfire. The last episode will cover the explicit descriptions of the punishments of the hellfire. And for some people, and I urge you to watch this and to listen to it, for some people it will help them with their faith. Because some people need that fear to be motivated for all the sins that they've committed. And some people also need that amount of balance for fear so that when we speak about paradise, things are balanced out, inshaAllah ta'ala. We will see you next time. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span, span, span. What you did in the open and what you conceive From big to small shall today be revealed Your deeds shall then be Allah alone.